क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव सीन दैट एन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप हैज अ मच बेटर रिजॉल्विंग पावर देन दैट ऑफ अ ऑप्टिकल माइक्रोस्कोप और एज कंपेयर टू दैट ऑफ एन आई we have also studied the fact that this is due to the use of electrons in electron microscope and the use of electromagnetic waves in the case of optical microscope now let us take a concrete example or rather instead of saying the statement in a very qualitative way we will like to say the statement in a very quantitative way but if we want to say the statement in a quantitative way what you require is a formula and this formula should actually relate your de broglie wavelength of the electron to its energy e and we do have such a kind of formula which was actually proposed by de broglie himself and this formula is lambda which is the de broglie wavelength is equal to h upon square root of 2 multiplied by m multiplied by e in this formula h represents the planck's constant whose value is 6.63 into 10 raised to minus 34 meter square kg per second or which also works out to joule second the second quantity is m wherein we are dealing with electrons so this is going to be the mass of the electrons and m is equal to 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg and e represents the energy acquired by the electron the next question is how do electrons acquire energy as you know electrons are nothing but they are charged particles and if we want to increase their velocity this means if we want to decrease their de broglie wavelength because remember lambda is inversely proportional to the square root of the energy so larger the energy of the electrons smaller is going to be their de broglie wavelength and higher is going to be the resolving power as you will see so coming back to the question how is it that i am going to increase the energy of a electron and this is very simple you simply accelerate it through a electric field so now let us assume let us take a very concrete example of let us say this the value of the accelerating electric field is in volts is 1000 volts which is also rig written in terms of 1 kv now do you know what is the energy that the electron will acquire and this energy is nothing but it will be 1000 ev called as 1000 electron volts now let us substitute this in the formula that is lambda is equal to h upon square root of 2 me so in the place of e we have e small e which is nothing but the electronic charge multiplied by the voltage now you may say how is it that we have come across this formula it's very simple energy acquired by a charged particle in a electric field is equal to its charge multiplied by the voltage through which it is being accelerated and that's the reason why capital e is equal to small e which is the particle charge multiplied by the accelerating voltage that is v in our example e the value of e turns out to be 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb as you know that this is nothing but the charge on a single electron at the same time the value of e as you know is nothing but 1000 volts substituting this back in the formula we get the value of the de broglie wavelength for electrons as 
into 10 raised to minus 11 meters. You can check this out. Just take up your calculators and you can punch in these values and you will see that the, that the final answer comes out to be around 3.88 into 10 raised to minus 11 meters. Suddenly we will ask that we are in the nanoscale domain. But how is it that I am going to compare this in the nanometer range? The answer is very simple. In, in terms of nanometers, this works out to 0 0.038 nanometers. Remember, it comes out to 0 0.038 nanometers. And if you want it in terms of angstroms, it comes out to 0 0.388 angstroms. Now, we have got the de Broglie wavelength for the electron. So, these are the electrons that I am going to use for analyzing in analyzing any sample in a scanning electron microscope or a tunneling electron microscope. Both of them of course are electron microscopes. Now can we compare these values with the lambda values that is the wavelength values for light which is used in optical microscope? Yes, we can do that. Now light as you know has a big span of wavelengths. Now let us focus only on one wavelength which is the which comes normally in the middle range and that is nothing but the yellow wavelength. Yellow in itself has its own span of wavelengths but let us have a very typical value of 5500 angstroms which works out to 550 nanometers. As you know one angstrom is equal to 0.1 nanometers which we have learned in our earlier video. So when I compare this with the formulae, when I compare this with the de Broglie wavelength for the electrons which I am using in a electron microscope, you can see the comparison now. At one end, you have the lambda of de Broglie that turns out to be around 0 0.03 nanometers. And at one end, for the optical microscope, we have the lambda which that turns out to be around 550 nanometers. What is your conclusion about this? Right? You will definitely say that, sir, what happens in the case of electron microscope is I can see more deeper because the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons in itself is 0 0.03 nanometers, which is much, much smaller than the higher value of the wavelengths that is used in optical microscope that is 550 nanometers. And as you know that the resolving power of a, any instrument is inversely proportional to the lambda that is he is using. Hence, since the lambda de Broglie is small, hence the resolving power of an electron microscope is much much higher than that of an optical microscope. I hope this thing is very clear to you now. Thanks students for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our channel Ikeda. Thanks for watching.